Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is one that I've wanted to film for a long time and it's going to involve me trying on every dress in my wardrobe. Well I guess not every dress because this isn't going to include the historical costumes that I made over the years. Instead I'm going to be focusing on my actual closet that I reach into on a day-to-day -day basis. I'd say 90% of what I wear when I leave the house are dresses and 90% of those dresses are ones from the 1940s or 50s or even the 1930s. I do have a few more modern pieces mixed into my wardrobe as well as some handmade items which you've probably seen featured on this channel, but the vast majority of the dresses that I own are vintage. So I really wanted to share them with all of you because there's very little in life that I love more than vintage clothing, and I just thought it would be a good time. Now this video is going to include some recent additions to my wardrobe, which are from Poshmark, and Poshmark is the sponsor for today's video. If you're unfamiliar with Poshmark, it's a buying and selling app, and they have a website too. It used to be strictly for clothing, but now they've expanded and you can even sell home items on there. I can vouch for the fact that you can find amazing deals on Poshmark from pretty much all of your favorite brands, along with thousands of others, and they even sell luxury goods. But what I love most about Poshmark is all the unique things you can find there, whether it's the early 2000 garments you're after, something from the 1980s, or even something from the 1950s, they'll have something for you. And Poshmark is one of the first places that I look when I'm interested in expanding my wardrobe. But it's not just for buying, it's definitely a website for selling too. It's the fastest way to clean out your wardrobe if you're looking to make a little bit more space or make a little bit of money. Download Poshmark using the link in my description box and sign up today using my referral code Angela Costumery to get $10 off your first purchase. You can shop from my closet or from your favorite brands. A huge thank you to Poshmark for sponsoring this segment and let's get right into the try on portion because trust me there's a lot to try on. So I guess I'll just start with the dress I'm wearing. This is a vintage dress from the 1980s and it's 100% cotton but it's made out of a cotton flannel so it feels really really soft and warm and just lovely without being scratchy at all. I find it really difficult to find long sleeve dresses um, especially this more form-fitting style that fit over my hips as well as not having too much room in the bust but this one is perfect and it looks really really cute belted. It's one of the few long sleeve dresses in my wardrobe and it's definitely one of my favorites. This dress is from a brand called Swirl Vintage, which is best known for the wrap dresses that they made in the 1950s and 60s. So this dress closes with a single button at the back and then two waist ties that go through a slit in the side seam. And then the actual dress has a wood grain print, uh, which is light pink and white. And I got this lovely dress from Spearmint Vintage on Instagram. This is one of the newer additions to my wardrobe. I got this dress from a shop called The Scarlet Willow in Pennsylvania on Queen Street. I really love the embroidered detail on it and I think the collar is quite cute. It's got these really funky belt loops though, so I definitely have to add a belt into my wardrobe that will match this nicely. I think this dress is from the 1960s and it's got this really cool uh, faux pocket detail on the back as well. This dress is by a brand called Lewis Ann Juniors, and it's just a very simple dress from the 1960s. And then this interesting faux button closure down the front with a little pleat detail. I think it's a really, really cute dress, and I love the color of it, and I love how it fits me. However, it is quite short on me, but it's been hemmed, so I can take it down by about two inches. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And it's made out of a really nice, really lovely, lightweight cotton. The only thing is that it has a zipper up the back, and it's really difficult to get up and down on your own. <laughs> like an exercise in flexibility. This is a really charming dress that I just bought on Poshmark. I actually bought a trio of dresses from the same seller. They were all new with tags from the 1940s and 50s. This particular dress is by the brand Dan Rivers and I actually saved the tags because I thought they were quite cute. It's modern classics on one and it also says that it's a wrinkle shed fabric, though I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. However, my favorite thing about this dress is that the washing instructions are just toss it in the tub. Like literally that's all they say, which I think is hilarious. And I think the dress itself is really cute, though it could definitely use an iron. Also, it's worth noting that this is a vintage size 16 and I have a 29 inch waist and it just barely fits me. That shows how far sizing has come in the past 70 years. This is another dress from the same seller and I'm not not sure that the horizontal stripes are super flattering on me, but I do think it's a really cute dress and it would transition to winter quite nicely if I paired it with a navy colored cardigan. And once again, this is in a size 16 and it fits me perfectly and it's a really good length on me as well, which is a rare when you're over 5 foot 10. So this is a Kenrose dress from the late 1930s or early 1940s, and I love this dress. It's got a really sweet floral pattern and then this blue detailing. It's actually got little tiny scallop details made out of a matching material. And then it's got the contrasting blue button, and this is the final dress that I purchased from that seller on Poshmark. And I purchased this dress because I actually own this exact dress in another color, and I love it, so I decided I would get it in this color as well. I also just thought it was too much of a coincidence to come across an identical dress to one that I already own 
owned that was almost 80 years old. It just seemed like fate for me to own this one as well. So this is the other Yan Rose dress I own, and as you can tell, it's got the exact same sleeve details. It's got the contrasting buttons. It has that interesting scallop pipe detail, the piping around the collar, uh, the same waist tie, and even the same detailing at the pockets. This dress is actually missing its tag, but I think it's fair to assume that it's by Ken Rose since it's identical to the other dress, just in a smaller size, as you can probably tell by how it's more fitted on me. This is another swirl branded dress from the 1960s. This is one of the first vintage dresses I purchased. I remember saving it to my watch list on Etsy. It was way outside my budget, and then it went 50% off, and I snatched it up so quick. It's this lovely soft yellow color, and it's made out of cotton. Then it's got these really sweet embroidered details down the front, as well as on the pockets. It also closes up the back with about 12 snaps, so it's really difficult to get on and off with Without assistance, which is just a little bit high maintenance for me. But this dress holds a very special place in my heart, so I haven't been able to pass it on just yet. This is the first of quite a few dresses in my wardrobe that I made myself. Made out of a tulip pink quilting cotton and an Anna Adams pattern. I love the shape of this dress and I love the print, obviously. Uh, I chose a jellyfish fabric for this dress because the sleeves kind of reminded me of jellyfish, and so did the unusual seaming on the bodice. And we have yet another tulip pink dress based off of a pattern for the 1960s. This one has gray buttons and little chipmunks on it. I love the psychedelic nature of tulip pink prints. I think they lend themselves really well for 60s and 70s dresses. And this is again one of the few long sleeve dresses I have in my wardrobe, but it's one of my favorites because it's so cute. And one of the nice things about making dresses for yourself is that you can make them long enough. So this is a cotton dress that I purchased from Revival with a pleated waist and puppy dogs and baskets on the hem. Now this is a classic case of buying a dress that doesn't really fit into your wardrobe and you don't get a whole lot of wear out of and you should probably sell, but I'm not going to because it has puppy dogs on the hem. And when something has puppies on it, it makes it infinitely more difficult to get rid of it. So this is a dress that I bought really recently. It's from the 1960s and it's made out of a slippery feeling fabric, almost like a mix between silk and polyester. I love the print of this dress. I just think it's so cute and fun and funky and it comes with a matching belt. And I bought it from Boyer Vintage on Etsy. However, this dress is just a little bit too big for me and I really don't feel like it suits me. So you can find this dress in my closet on Poshmark if you're interested in buying it. This is another dress that I picked up from the Scarlet Willow in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I don't usually buy wiggle dresses, but I really love the detailing on this one. It's got pin tucks and embroidery down the front, and then contrasting colored olive buttons, which match a belt. It's also got these really large belt loops, and it just looks vaguely military-inspired to me. It's got quite cute detailing on the back as well, and I just couldn't resist it. I thought it was a really cute dress, and it was a little bit outside of my normal style. I, it was definitely something I could picture myself wearing, and I'm glad that I got it. This is a Joan Miller dress that I purchased on Instagram. It's made out of a really interesting wooly fabric, and once again, this is one of the few body contrasts in my wardrobe. I just really like this olive green color, and it also reminded me of Mrs. Maisel dress, just with the fit and the slight gathers underneath the bust. I'm not quite confident enough to wear super fitted dresses like this very often, but I do think it's a really cute design. I think this is my final form-fitting dress that will be featured in this video. I purchased this from Ren Gray's Antique Market for $25, which I think was a pretty good deal. I think this is from the 1960s and it's made out of a wool, however I did manage to wash it without it shrinking too much. This dress is a better length on me and I think I feel a little bit more confident in it, but I think I still prefer fit and flare styles. So this is a gorgeous dress I picked up on my recent trip to Pennsylvania. It's made out of a cotton and it's got this really interesting pleated detail at the bust, which is then mimicked by having a, a pleated skirt starting at the waist. It's also got really beautiful lace work around the neckline and I love this kind of minty pistachio color. However, it's a little small on me, so this is what I'm officially calling my goal dress, which I realize isn't the healthiest thing in the world to do, but I just couldn't leave this dress behind and I love it too much to part with it. This is a dress that I got at the Manhattan Vintage Expo in New York City, and it is by DRA Originals. I think this is one of the prettiest dresses I have, and it fits me perfectly. It's made out of a really lightweight chambray, and then all of this detailing on the bodice isn't printed. It's actually all stitched on, uh, and it's called soutage detailing, and I just think it is the prettiest dress. I am so in love with this and I'm so glad that I bought it. Here's a dress that's similar in color, though not similar in any other ways. This is a Laura Ashley dress, which is in a size 36, which is a USA 8. It's made out of a lightweight denim, and then it's got this really cute embroidered collar. It also has buttons down the entire front that are made out of matching material. But this is the only dress that has ever fit me in the waist, but been too small for me in the bust. But this would be so darling on someone who's more of a pear shape rather than hourglass, and I know it could go to a good home. So this will be listed on Poshmark as well. This is another dress I picked up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania 
Pennsylvania. And I love this dress because it's got that clear 1950s style, but it has almost Edwardian details. All of the eyelet work on the collar is hand embroidered, which is just insanity. And the print of it almost reminds me of watermelon. I think it looks like seeds. And the collar extends all the way around the back. The skirt is long enough for me, which we've talked about being a rarity. And then has three very wide pin tucks, though I'm not sure they can really be called pin tucks when they're almost two inches wide, near the hem, which again is a very Edwardian style detail. This is a really charming floral dress in the 1960s that I purchased from Holly Point on Etsy. I just adore this dress. I feel like it's really cute. It's relatively large on me, so that makes it very comfortable. And it's quite versatile in terms of accessories because the print has blue tones in it and red tones, olive tones, and that white base to it. I made this out of a commercial pattern and a really cute quilting fabric that has betta fish on it and mermaids and goldfish. And then I used a contrasting stripe fabric and applied the goldfish on it to add a little bit more interest. I also love how it's seen down the front because it's almost a kaleidoscope sort of effect. However, this dress does have a habit of the buttons popping open, so I might replace it with a zipper at some point. This dress is definitely staying in my wardrobe, but what I'll be passing along is this Saks Fifth Avenue dress. This is the prettiest dress and I paid way too much for it and I'm absolutely gutted that it doesn't fit me. It's too small on the bust for me and it's too short-waisted, so even if I lost 20 pounds, this dress would just not suit me. So I'm hoping to find it a better home. I'm sure someone would look amazing in this. Just not me. Now we have entered the polka dot phase of my wardrobe, and if you're thinking you have enough polka dot dresses to consider it a phase in your wardrobe, yes, yes I do. This first one I picked up at a huge antique outdoor expo in Massachusetts, and it's one of my favorites purely because it only cost $15. That's not the only reason I like it, but that's definitely one reason. I love the contrasting stripe detail on the sleeves, and then it actually carries that detail onto the skirt. I also just love the polka dots and how these fabrics complement each other, and I think the shade of peachy orange is really interesting and not something I've really seen elsewhere. I like the length of this dress too and it's about five inches too big for me in the waist and then I cinch it in with the tie so it's very very comfortable you don't have to worry about doing up a zipper or anything like that since it just pulls over your head. This is another dress purchased from the same market and I got this from the same seller for $15 as well. I love the sleeves on this. I feel like usually 1950s dresses have pretty tight sleeves but these are a little bit fluttery and they're accentuated by shoulder pads and then it's got this really neat gathering detail on the front and this is polka dot but it almost looks like two-tone fabric from a distance because the polka dots are so subtle. It's a nubbier feeling fabric too which is kind of interesting and I think it's really nice how it fits me and really really flattering. This is the last of the $15 dresses and again I really like this one. It's got really large pockets at the front that have little ties on them and it's made out of a gingham that is seamed on the bias down the front as well as down the front of the skirt. It also pairs really well with a red felt to complement the red buttons. This is a dress from the 1940s, which is way too short on me. And when I say way too short, I mean like literally six inches too short. But I absolutely love the piping details on the bodice and the red buttons paired with the red polka dots. I think it's probably the cutest dress I own. I just think it's absolutely adorable. And I purchased this from Jambalaya on Etsy. Here you can see the problematic length, but it is still just so cute I can't bear to part with it. And it's probably going to stay in my wardrobe forever. It also makes me feel a little bit like a nurse in the 1940s, and I'm not mad about it. Speaking of feeling like a nurse from the 1940s, this is another dress that definitely looks better with a belt, but it's got a very similar color palette to the last one. I made it following a 1930s dress pattern out of a really lightweight cotton from Joann's. Then I added a cotton sateen heart over the chest, contrasting red buttons and red rickrack around the neckline, the cuffs, and the skirt. This is a charming dress that I purchased in New York City from the Manhattan Vintage Expo. I bought this dress in two different colors because they had two identical dresses. And this one has polka dots with a white base. And then it's got this really nice accordion pleated skirt which is very, very long. And I just adore this dress, but to be honest, I haven't worn it at all. So this is going to be in my Poshmark closet as well. And then this is the exact same dress, just in a pale blue color, and this dress came with its original belt. And this one I will be keeping. I just like the details of this dress so much, and I think this color is a little bit more flattering on me and a little bit different from anything else I have in my wardrobe. So this is the oldest dress in my wardrobe. It's from the 1930s. I ordered this from the Blues Tatter on Instagram, and I love this dress. They actually had two for sale, one in red and one in blue, and I am forever kicking myself for only buying one color. So I think it's darling. I love the buttons, I love the bow, I love the dolman sleeves with the little cuffs. 
This is another Tula Pink dress, and it's made out of one of her unicorn fabrics. And it's made out of the same Ann Adams pattern as my jellyfish dress. I still love this pattern, and I didn't make any changes, except I forgot to pre-wash this fabric. So after I washed it for the first time, it shrunk, and as you can probably tell, it's very, very tight on me. So I haven't gotten a lot of wear out of this dress, but hopefully it will fit me a little bit better in the future. I'm holding on to it and holding out hope. It's just not quite right at the moment. Now, if you follow my Sewing Through the Decade series, this dress might look familiar to you. This is the 1970s pattern that I featured in one of those videos, specifically the one for the 1970s. So I ended up getting rid of the Rayon version of this dress and I remade it out of a Tula Pink owl and butterfly print fabric and it's a cotton so the dress holds its shape much better and I think it's just more flattering and I really much prefer the fit and the print and the color of this version rather than the one I featured in that making up video. This is the barbecue dress from Unique Vintage. It has pockets and really cute lace details and then the back it has these large buttons. This is late 1940s at its finest. I absolutely adore the striped yoke details and I love the contrasting white buttons. I remember this dress being described as dingy. It's definitely not in the best condition in the world but I think the soft lilac color is just darling and I think it's so so cute. I really don't have anything else like this dress in my wardrobe. It's very special in terms of color as well as style. Here I have two dresses I'm not going to be trying on in this video because I don't have a proper slip for either one of them. So they just don't look quite right. And the reason they don't look quite right without a slip is because these are both organza dresses that are completely sheer. This one's from the 1930s and I purchased it from that shop called A Scarlet Willow. It belonged to the shop owner's great aunt who wore it to her graduation and her name was Margie. I definitely have to make a pale blue slip to go underneath this before I can properly wear it and show it off to all of you. This dress I have modeled before but the slip for it is currently in the wash so I'm not going to be trying it on today but it is a 1950s evening gown with all of this really cool ruffled trim on it and the trim extends all the way down the skirt and it's just so fluffy and ruffly and wonderful and it's white as hell so this is basically me in a dress. This dress is one of the rare modern pieces in my wardrobe. It was about $20 from Forever 21. It's a really pretty grayish blue with black and white stripes running through it. And I bought this dress because the square neckline and the wiggle slash sheath shape reminded me a lot of dresses from the 1960s. In person, I think it looks a lot more 1990s than it does 1960s, which was probably the inspiration to begin with. But I do think it's a really cute, quite flattering dress, which is why I decided to keep it and why it has stayed in my wardrobe. This is the last of my Tula Pink dresses. This was made following an advanced shirtwaist pattern from the 1950s, and I made it out of a stingray print quilting cotton because the pin tuck details down the front reminded me of the shape of a stingray. It also has pin tuck details across the hips. I just think it's a really cute, really flattering dress. So this is a dress that I bought for my 20th birthday from a little store on Long Island called Paper Doll Vintage. I love this dress. It's from the 1940s and it's in the prettiest like seafoamy green color. And then they very cleverly like, used this pre-embroidered fabric that has these emerald green flowers on it. So they positioned that embroidered detailing at the hem of the sleeves, around the collar, as well as down the front of the dress. And then it has these charming little pearl buttons and a matching belt. I do think the color of this dress is kind of hospital gowny, but I still really, really like it. And I think it's a really flattering shade. I know I've said this about a lot of dresses, but this one of my favorite dresses that I own because it's got all my favorite colors in it. It has blue and green and turquoise and it fits me perfectly through the bust and the waist without being too tight or too loose which is kind of the definition of a perfect fit. This is probably from the late 1950s, and I just think it's really charming, got a really nice amount of volume, and it's a dress that I find myself reaching for really often this summer, and I think it transitions well into fall too, just because of the colors. This is a navy colored dress from the 1960s, and it's made out of 100% acetate. I know that because it came new with its tags, and it said dry clean only, but I chose to take that as a suggestion, and it actually washed up really nicely. I gravitated towards it because of the soutage detailing on the sleeves. I just thought it was really neat, and it looked like a good like interview boss lady type of dress while having that vintage flair to it that I love so much. It is a bit short on me but it fits me perfectly over the hips and it's got these little pleats at the front that add volume but not too much volume as to make it unflattering. If it was four inches longer and machine washable it would be a perfect dress. This dress however is not perfect though it is very cute. I paid more for this than I should have given its condition. It's missing a button, there's some light discoloration to the collar, and when I tried trying this on I split the side seam. And I split the side seam because this dress is about two inches too small for me which I didn't realize at the time. So this dress is just not a good fit for me quite literally. Because of that I haven't been willing to really invest the time into fixing this up and getting it into a good wearable state because I know I will never be able to wear it. So I'm going to be listing this on Poshmark 
like in my closet for a really low price. So if one of you want this dress and want to give it the loving home it deserves, then you can. Speaking of dresses not for me, I purchased this 1960s cotton dress from an Instagram sale. It's got a really neat linen yoke made out of white fabric and then it's navy with these bright white polka dots and it's got a really cool like sailor style collar that goes all the way around the back. However, this is very short on me and because it is such a full skirt, the length problem is just intensified by the amount of volume. So it doesn't suit me at all. However, this would look absolutely adorable on someone who's a bit more petite. This is a navy sailor style hell bunny dress and this dress fits me like a glove. I was really nervous that it would end up being flattering because it's so fitted through the waist and I wasn't sure it would flare out enough to go from top my hips, but it does. I found myself wearing this quite a lot in summer and pairing it with white shoes and a white handbag. The length is really nice on me too and I love the little bias cut white details on it. So this is a sailor style dress from the 1940s that I purchased at Manhattan Vintage. And the fun story about this dress is it was actually on my favorites list on Etsy. And then I saw it at Manhattan Vintage and ended up buying it and not even recognizing that I'd favorited it online. It wasn't until I was going through my Etsy wish list I realized I'd come across this dress before. So I think it's bait that we ended up together. It's made out of a navy cotton and is dolman sleeves and a really cute striped bow and striped bias binding around the collar. Again, this is just a dress that has the perfect amount of volume through the hip. It's not clingy, it's very comfortable. I can sit and walk with ease in it. It isn't too flowy, which makes it have that iconic 1940s silhouette. And I think be a little bit more flattering than some of the super full skirts, though I am fond of those as well. This is a dress that I bought from Etsy, and it really stuck out to me because of the pleated details down the front. In addition to having the pleats, it actually has a whole bunch of navy colored stitching, which complements the navy floral pattern of this dress, as well as the navy leather that's used on the belt. It's an elastic belt, so it's adjustable, and then the skirt is pleated all the way around but I don't know if this color suits me particularly well so I don't think this is a piece that's really gonna be in my wardrobe forever though I am quite fond of it. This is an obnoxious dress I made last year and I love it very very much. It's made out of a K facet print and I drafted the pattern myself. I wanted something that was vaguely Victorian inspired which is why I did the poofy leg of mutton sleeves but I also wanted to have it in a 1930s flair to it and I think I accomplished that and then I made it out of a very fun non-historical print. So it's kind of a mix and mashup of a dress but I do think it's quite cute and I really love the pattern I came up with. This is a floral dress from the 1940s made out of a early version of jersey fabric that I bought from Jambalaya on Instagram. I remember I'd purchased several other dresses this month and I really questioned buying it, but it's actually become one of my most worn dresses. And I find this really easy to style in the summer, playing off the blue tones in the floral pattern or the white tones, as well as pairing it in the winter with some black heels and a black belt and a black coat. It's just one of those dresses I can throw on and actually has a zipper down the front which makes it really easy to throw on. So this is one of my favorite dresses in my wardrobe just because of the convenience factor of it. A dress I'm less glad I purchased is this one from the 1940s. It's a really cute purple dress with kind of a mottled color fabric and it's by the brand British Lady and the tag is perfectly intact so I don't know if this was even worn before. It has a few little splits in the sleeve seams which need to be repaired but it's otherwise in excellent condition. However, I didn't realize how large this was when I purchased it and I also didn't realize how short it was. So this is made for someone who's a little bit larger yet also quite petite and it just does not fit me or suit me at all. So hopefully one of you can snag this and give it some love. This is a dress that I purchased from Holly Point on Etsy. I admired this dress for about a year before buying it and it was one of the only things in her shop that didn't sell. So again, I think it was fate. We are meant to be together. It's a really cute fit and flare style dress with this scallop detail around the neckline, which is very hard to do, so I always admire it when I see it in mass-produced dresses. And then the facing is actually a contrasting blue color, which I think is cute. It's also dark enough in color that I don't have to wear a slip with it, which is a major plus. This is a Masonette Frox dress from the 1950s and the size 15. It's got really sweet organza netting around the neckline, and then it's got lace running around as well. Again, I really like the shape of this. It's a little bit loose through the bust and waist, and then it's got these gathers just at the side, so it flares out nicely over my hips while keeping that slimmer silhouette and not adding too much bulk to my stomach. And I love the color too. I really like blue, as you might have been able to tell throughout this video. This dress is from a brand called Downtowner, and I love the details of it. It actually is seaming around the collar, so it forms this square shape, which I think is really clever. And I think the shape of it is super flattering. I love that it has pockets and how it's kind of that wiggle dress style with a bit of volume, so it's a little bit more comfortable. I purchased this dress from Spearmint Vintage on Etsy, and that actually came new with tags. But I've since washed it, so I could actually wear it. This is the only completely black dress I own. I purchased it from Renninger's Antique Market. Weirdly, it actually reminds me a lot of the white dress I showed you earlier, because it has lace inset work, which is very reminiscent of Edwardian era, and isn't something you really 
really see in 1950s dresses, and especially don't see in more modern dresses. This dress is homemade, but it's impeccably made. In fact, it's almost like a puzzle with how well it's made, because there are about four snap closures, snap closure at the neckline, a hook at the waist, four buttons, and some other stuff too. They really put their all into making this dress, and I think it shows because it's really just delightful. This is a dress that I made myself for a 1940s pattern, but this is made out of a cotton that I got from Joanne's as part of their Celebrate It collection, and I placed the fabric so the stars were most danced towards the hem as well as towards the shoulder of the dress, and I paired it with some star-shaped buttons to tie it all together. This was actually made from the exact same pattern as last dress, I just used a different sleeve variation. I like this one a little bit more just because I think the shoulders work with the longer sleeves a little bit better, and I also love the bat applique details that I did on the pockets. Definitely one that I'm going to get a lot more wear out of as it starts to get cooler. I made this in summer, so unfortunately it hasn't had its chance to shine just yet. This is a dress I bought from a little vintage shop in Greenport here on Long Island. It's made out of a reddish purpley colored corduroy and it's got lace all the way around the neckline and the waist and then it has little pearl buttons. It's got a basque waist to it which means that it points down towards the center which is really different than anything else I have. This dress is from the 1980s with a zipper up the back and I think it's quite nice and fun for winter and as I said very different from anything else that I own. This is a made by Maryland dress that I purchased on Poshmark. It's got a wrap style to it and a relatively low neckline. And then these really cute, uh, slightly longer than capped sleeves, but relatively short sleeves. But it's also very soft and it's machine washable, which is fantastic for a thicker dress, since usually they say dry clean only. I think this dress is perfect for fall and for winter when you layer it with a cardigan and a really neat belt, because it definitely looks better belted since it's slightly short waisted on me. This was made out of a faux wool flannel and it's technically more of a jumper than it is a dress, but I thought I would include it. I made this as the 1960s Sewing Through Decades project. It's actually one of the pieces that is really stayed and become a staple in my wardrobe. I think it looks really cute on its own as well as layered over top of short sleeve or long sleeve blouses depending on the season. This is another favorite autumn dress and this was purchased from the Blues Tatter on Instagram. I got a really amazing deal on it and I just think it's adorable. It's made out of a plaid fabric, obviously, and it's quite a silky feeling fabric though it's still hand washable which is awesome. It's got these very large slightly pointed cuffs that close with buttons. It's lightly pleated so it's got a little bit of flair to the skirt but not too much and it's just a really easy, really nice to wear dress. This is a Dorothy Hubs dress that I recently replaced all the buttons on. It's made out of a really interesting thicker striped fabric and this definitely looks best paired with a belt since for some reason it doesn't have a buttonhole at the waist. So I pair this with a black or a white belt and I think that makes it a lot more flattering and makes this look a little bit less odd. But even with the odd button placement, I really like this dress. I think the fit is nice and I love the dolman sleeves that extend into the long sleeves. You don't see that very often in dresses my size and it's a nice twist. This is definitely one that I reach for pretty often, though it does drive me crazy how wrinkled it gets, especially since it's been in storage since it's been the summer months instead of winter. This is a relatively recent addition to my wardrobe, which I also bought on Poshmark. I thought the seaming of it was really neat, as was the pocket. It reminded me of the very late 1960s, and it's made out of a soft, kind of heavier fabric that almost feels like wool, but is actually cotton. And I bought a really cute hat that matches it perfectly and has little tassels on it. This is more of a wiggle dress slash fitted dress, so I don't feel super confident in it, but I think since the color is relatively muted and since it's got longer sleeves, Leaves. It's just a little bit more covered and that makes me feel a bit more comfortable. So I think this thing I'm going to get quite a bit of wear out of now that we're in a season where it's wearable. Now the last dress I have to share is another one that I made. This is made out of the most fun fabric. It's bright orange and covered in this monkey print. And it's got a very, very full skirt. I made this following a Vogue pattern, a vintage reproduction Vogue pattern. And I posted the video about making it several years ago. It has stayed in my wardrobe that entire time because it's just so fun. However, something that won't be staying in my wardrobe is this hat. It's absolutely darling, but I actually own another orange hat that I reach for a little bit more often. So I think it's time for this one to go to a better home, so you'll be able to find it in my Poshmark closet. And that, my friends, is every dress I'm going to be trying on in this video, and almost every dress in my wardrobe, aside from two that are currently in the laundry. So let's cut to the outro, because I am exhausted, and I have a lot of clothing to put away. So that is everything. I'm regretting filming this video because it took a very long time, but I hope it was enjoyable for all of you. And once again, thanks to Poshmark for sponsoring today's video. You can download the app using the link in my description box and my referral code AngelaCostumery to get $10 off your first purchase. So you can shop in my closet or your favorite brands. Thanks to you for watching and I will talk to all of you very soon.